pleasure of having uh, Lina Vandre to give us a talk uh, on useful entanglement uh, that can be extracted from noisy graph states. Uh, so a short biography of her. Uh, she is currently a PhD student in uh, Otfried uh, Gunhe, uh, Gunhe uh, group in uh, Siegel. I think uh, I'm I'm probably butchering the pronunciation, <laughs> but no, really. anyway, it should be close <laughs> enough. <laughs> yes. Really uh, so she's main research interest is in like uh, foundations of uh, quantum physics uh, and quantum information, uh, with some focus uh, specifically on like graph and hypergraph states, uh, generating this with uh, good fidelity and uh, transforming from one kind of state to another. And uh, but she's also interested in uh, uh, things related to quantum networks and non-locality. Uh, yes. Uh, so yeah, please, if uh, if you would like, you could start uh, giving us your talk. Yeah, thank you very much for the nice introduction, and especially thank you very much for uh, the invitation and giving me the opportunity to present my work. I'm very happy to be here today. And maybe as a comment, um, whenever you have questions, feel free to interrupt me and ask whenever you like. Um, yeah, as you already said, my name is Lina van Dree and I'm doing a PhD in Otfried Gunes Group in, at the University of Siegen. And today I want to present a shared work with um, Konrad Szymanski and Otfried Güne about useful entanglement, uh, which can be extracted from noisy graph states. Um, a motivation why we do it, well, as you probably all know, uh, entanglement is a very important resource in several applications in quantum information, so we could even say, uh, yeah, in all interesting information in quantum information, um, we need entanglement, for example, in quantum cryptography, especially um, key distribution, and in quantum computing and quantum networks. Um, but in general, it is hard to generate. So many of these protocols assume that there's, there are two parties, an Alice and a Bob, and they share an entangled link, for example, a bell pair. But if you consider, um, if you have an Alice, and Alice is together with me in Siegen here in Germany, and Bob is um, in Taipei and Taiwan together with you, and uh, we want to do um, we want to generate a key, and for this we need an entangled link. But this is a task which is highly difficult to, or already, it's already very difficult to um, get this entangled state, because we don't have a fiber which goes from Siegen to Taipei, so that Alice could generate a state and send a photon uh, to you, uh, or to Bob. Um, because we don't have a fiber, and all, even if we would have a fiber, the photon would get, get lost in between. So what we need to do, it's something, it's a, yeah, it's a question which is discussed a lot in quantum networks, that we would need to um, uh, have some middle nodes and generate several links and then do some entanglement swapping, or I don't know. Um, but yeah, at the end, what we do, we generate a big state and do something, to get a bell pair between two nodes. Um, another example where distance is not such a problem, but still we have some restrictions in topology. Um, this is an example of a quantum computer which IBM runs. And um, this quantum computer has many uh, qubits, all the nodes are qubits. And um, it allows one qubit gates and two qubit gates. And the two qubit gates can be performed whenever there's, an, yeah, there's a connection between the two nodes. So it is easy to uh, generate an entangled pair between this node and this node, but if we want to have an entangled pair between this node and this node, um, we have to do some tricks. We have to um, perform many one and two qubit gates in between, yeah, the including the qubits between these two nodes. And then maybe we measure something or, yeah, I don't know exactly what we do, but um, it is possible to generate such a link um, if we know how and if we have a, um, a protocol to do this. And so these are two very, difficult, uh, two very different examples, but what they have in common is 
um, that we want to distribute entanglement between two specific nodes and we can't do it uh, directly. Um, in my talk, I don't want to talk about all of this problem and all of this generality, but about one specific aspect of this problem. And in my case, I'm close to, uh, it's similar to um, what we have here. So in my talk, I mainly talk about graph states. I will introduce what they are, but graph states can be generated in a computer like this. So it's a reasonable assumption. And uh, my goal is to extract bell pairs or later also GHZ states from this graph states. And um, I have some assumptions, which are that my states can be noisy. I have certain noise models, which I consider. And um, I assume that whenever I perform a measurement, this measurement works perfectly. Um, yeah, so this is the outline of my talk. Um, so I first want to introduce graph states to you. Then I want to um, explain you how to extract bell pairs from perfect graph states. Then I want to consider noisy graph states and repeat the same or see how we can still extract bell pairs from noisy graph states. And um, at the end, I want to show you how this method can be extended to extract um, the edge set states. But yeah, let me start with graph states. Or first, what is a graph? I guess um, all of you have seen a graph before. A graph is a tuple of vertices and edges. And in a graph state, uh, we prepare um, every, uh, every uh, node of a graph stands for a qubit. And we prepare these qubits in the plus eigenstate. So this is what we have here. And then we perform CZ gates, which um, are entangling gates. They entangle qubits. Um, before, uh, between the nodes which are connected in the graph. So as an example, we have this four node graph state, therefore we initialize four qubits in, um, in the uh, plus state, and then we um, have this edges, and for every edge we perform a gate, one gate between qubit one and two, one gate between qubit one and three, one between qubit one and four, and one gate between two and three. Um, this is one definition of a graph state. We have a second definition of graph states, which will be um, more relevant in this talk. Um, and this is defining a graph state via some stabilizer operators. So we can define operators, um, and we define as many operators as we have nodes, one operator per node. And we define them in a way that it, uh, the operator has an x, Pauli x operator on qubit i and a Pauli z operator on all neighbors. Neighbors of a node are the, node, the nodes which are connected to the node i. So as an example, node i is connected to 2, 3, and 4. Therefore, the neighborhood of i is 2, 3, and 4. And the generator of the, the operator, which I also call generator, defined like this. We have an x operator on Pauli a uh, Pauli x operator on um, qubit 1 and sets on all other. Then qubit 2 has two neighbors, which are 1 and 3. And therefore, our operator is defined like this. We have a x on qubit 2 and a z on the two neighbors, 1 and 3. And same for the others. And then the graph state is defined as the unique state, which is stabilized by all um, this operator's g. Stabilized means that if we apply the operator to the state, we get exactly the same state. Um, yeah, and these are stabilizers of a state that, um, small note, um, if um, two operators, T1 and T2, stabilize the state, also the product of the state stabilizes the state. So we can define a set of stabilizers, which is generated by these operators. And these are all these operators together with all possible combination of products of these vectors. Yeah. And yeah, one uh, useful reference for graph states is Heinet in 2006. Um, why we talk about graph states, or why do we do this specific choice? Um, 
yeah, there are many reasons for it. One is that um, multipartite entanglement is difficult to describe and it is not very well understood when it comes to more than three qubits or more than four qubits. And um, working with a lot of qubits is um, often a bit difficult, especially if you want to work with a density matrix, the matrix becomes very big and you don't want to write it down, you don't want your computer to do computations with it. Um, but um, this graph states are um, easier to handle, both on paper and also on the computer, because what we need is we only need to store the information about a graph. So we need to store a set of vertices and then a set of edges, um, where we can, yeah, which is much easier than storing a big matrix. And also, um, it is very easy to see what happens with the graph states because for many common um, operations, um, yeah, which are typically applied in quantum circuits, there exist graphical rules um, which tell you what to do with a graph um, in order to see how the state looks like after the operation is applied. Um, this is nice, but the most important thing is that um, the states are actually very useful. Um, there are many useful applications. One, is, uh, one reason is that we have several prominent examples of graph states. For example, the GHZ state can be represented as a graph state, and GHZ states are applied in many applications, for example, conference key distribution. And another thing is that um, they are stabilizer states, and stabilizer states are also um, have also very useful properties in certain applications, for example, error correcting codes. And um, on the next slides, I want to um, talk a bit more about, uh, I want to give you some of these prominent examples, and I want to talk a bit more about graphical rules or introduce some graphical rules. Yeah, so let's start with the example. Um, yeah, one very well known state is the Bell state. And if I want to represent it as a graph, I do it like this, so this is the Bell state graph. It has two nodes and one edge in between. And um, to see why this is a Bell state, I carried out the calculations for you. So we initialize two states in the plus eigenstate because we have two nodes, and then we apply a CZ gate, and the state we get looks like this. And this is not exactly the Bell state, but if we apply a Hadamard to the second node, um, we get the phi plus uh, state. And um, yeah, this is one comment I would like to do. One further assumption which I take is that it is always easy to perform local measurements. Um, and sometimes, yeah, I'm, I, if I want to get a state, I'm happy if I get the state up to local unitary operations. Like this, if I want to have a Bell state and I get this graph state, I'm totally fine. Um, also because uh, local unitary operations cannot change any entanglement properties. So if I want to have a state with certain entanglement properties and I can produce it, maybe not exactly the state that I want, but it's the state up to local unitary operations, I'm happy. And um, maybe within this talk, sometimes I'm a bit sloppy and say, and I forgot to mention that um, the state is the same up to local unitary operations, but yeah, this is an assumption I always take. So in my language, I often say um, this is a Bell state, although it's just a Bell state up to local unitary operations. The next example is the GHZ state. Um, this is the GHZ state of three qubits. It's a line graph um, with three qubits. And if I carry out the computations, I can see that the resulting state um, is equal to the GHZ state up to two Hadamas on the last two nodes. And the same, in the same way we can, um, um, yeah, it works in the same way for n qubit GHZ states. Um, an n qubit GHZ state is a star graph with one middle node and n minus one outer nodes, which are all connected to this middle node. And it is um, equal to the GHZ state up to Hadamard 
on all except of the first node. So yeah, this is group of THZ states. Um, another prominent example is the cluster state, which is also a graph state. A cluster state is a graph state where the graph looks like a grid, like here. We have yeah, vertices and edges, and they are arranged in the grid form. And it became famous um, because uh, it was shown that it can be used for measurement-based quantum computing. Um, now I would like to show you some of the um, graphical rules, and especially the one for measurements, because um, the other operations I'm going to use. And I want to show you um, X, Z, and Y measurement, and I start with the easiest measurement, which is the Z measurement. Um, if I measure a node in the set, a node I in the set basis, what I, the graphical represent, a graphical rule in the graph is that I delete this node I. For example, if we have a graph, which I showed you before, and we measure node two, the state we get is this one. It's the same graph as before, but we deleted node two. And um, we don't get exactly this one. We have to apply some local unitaries on the neighboring nodes. So up to corrections, we get this state. And um, then the, we can also measure in the y basis. And to measuring in the y basis is a bit more complicated. What we have to do, or the graphical rule is, that we first apply a local complementation on this node i, and then delete the node. So what is a local complementation? A local complementation inverts the connectivity between the neighborhood of a certain node i. So we have, um, as an example, we have a qubit i, and the neighborhood are all other nodes, two, three, and four. And um, if we locally complement the graph, we change the adjacency between, or we invert the adjacency between two, three, and four. So the adjacency from one to other nodes stays the same. Uh, but whenever two nodes are adjacent in the original graph, like two and three here, they are not adjacent in the um, graph afterwards. And whenever um, neighboring nodes are not adjacent, they get adjacent here. So this is the graph after local complementation. And um, yeah, this is also called local local complementation because one can do it by only performing local unitary operations. And therefore, if we want to measure qubit one of this graph in the y basis, what we do is um, we perform a local complementation, get this graph, and then we delete node one and uh, get this graph. And the most complicated measurement rule out of the three is the X measurement. Here we have to perform three local complementations. Um, if you want to measure X on qubit one, we have to pick one node from the neighborhood of one uh, of, of node I, and first perform a local complementation on this neighboring node. Then we perform a local complementation on the node which we want to measure. Then we delete the node we wanted to measure and have to perform a local complementation on the neighboring node again. So in this example, I decided to measure node two and I chose three as a neighboring node. And um, so I performed a local complementation on three, then on two, then I deleted two and locally complemented on three again. And this is the graph which comes out. Um, this is everything I wanted to tell you about graph states in the introduction. Are there questions so far? Oh, not, uh, no, no, very clear, thank you. Okay, so then let me continue. Um, yeah, as I told you before, uh, the main goal of our paper is to extract um, certain graphs out of, certain graph states out of bigger graph states. And in the first step, we want to um, extract bell pairs from bigger graph states, which can be arbitrary, using Pauli measurements. And um, what we are interested in is to understand which initial states can be used. So the question is, is this one a useful graph state or a not so useful graph state? And also understand how we have to choose this Pauli measurements 
so that we get a state which looks like this. And the second goal is uh, to consider noisy input states. So it's basically the same goal, but um, we relax the assumption that the, our initial state looks exactly like this, but we assume that we have a noisy version of the desired input state. And um, then the third goal is to see how to um, how we can extend the methods to data set states. Uh, let me start with an easy example. So let's say our initial state is a line graph of five qubits, and we would like to get a bell pair between the outer nodes. What we can do here is um, we can measure with this qubit in the x basis, and this gives us this state. Then we um, do it again and again on the other two nodes, and um, this gives us a bell pair between this uh, two nodes. And yeah, now you might think this is a very easy solution to the question I um, presented in the beginning, because um, what we see here, so, so this actually works for arbitrary long um, chains. Um, and what we see here is that whenever we have a graph with two connected nodes, we can generate a bell pair between those because we can use set measurements. Uh, yeah, we can find the connection between the two nodes. Then we can use set measurements to measure out all other nodes. And then we have a line graph like this and can perform our protocol. Uh, so this is very nice. And in the ideal case, uh, we are done at this point and our paper is pointless because this was known before. But um, in a not so ideal case, we might have noise. So, oh yeah, or we have noise. <laughs> Generally, we have noise. And this might affect our initial state. So it can happen that we want to prepare this state, but um, somehow we failed to perform this node, uh, this, this um, CZ gate. And then the state we actually have looks like this. And we can do the same. We measure out all the inner nodes and by X measurements. And what we get then is two separate states because um, if the two initial state, yeah. And this is, so this is a result by which we get from this measurement scheme. But actually if the two initial nodes are not connected, there's no way by measuring nodes to get a connection between this. Um, so this is a nice, um, it's a nice way to extract bell pairs if no noise is present, but in the, yeah, as soon as we have noise, we see that this is not very resilient against noise. So what we want to do is to consider more complex structures. And yeah, this is what I'm going to do on the next slides. And um, what I want to do next is to repeat the same example um, and derive that we get a bell pair in a slightly different way, not by measuring rules, but by using the stabilizers. It looks a bit more complicated, and at least in my opinion, it looks more complicated. Um, but it turns out that it's e uh, with this, it's easier to find measurement patterns in more complicated graphs. And uh, Sorry, can yeah. I have a quick question on that sure. line graph? Uh, so here you're showing you wanted the bell pair on the ends, but I guess like the same trick would work even if it wasn't at the terminal end of the graph. Sure. So for example, mm -hmm. if you use this one and this one, mm -hmm. then we could perform a measure a set measurement here, and set measurement deletes the node, and then we would have a line graph of four nodes, and then do exactly the same. So we do a X ah, measurement mm -hmm. here, and then we yeah, we, we can also measure it at the end. But if we are here and perform a set measurement here, we end up with a bell pair between these two nodes. Ah, I see. Okay, thank you. Yeah, and, and this way, so whenever you have a graph, so for example, yeah, like this one, um, here you could choose this line. So there are many connections. You could choose, for example, this one. Then you can measure out all other nodes, this one here. And then you have a line graph, perform X measurements in between. It also works with Y measurements, and then you have a bell pair. Yeah, you could like delete everything until you get a line graph, then do the line graph. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. But of course, there's more efficient ways to do it. 
Yes, of course. <laughs> yes, of course. And it's maybe also not, maybe we also don't want to delete all the notes. Oh, yeah, true, true. Like, yeah. like yeah, in the picture I showed you in the beginning, so we have this quantum compute, yeah, we have this big thing, maybe we want to work, so maybe our final task is not to just get a bell pair, but we want, they want to do, so, so there might be other constraints. Yes. <laughs> we <want> to, <laughs> yeah. Probably we, we don't, yeah, we want to get the bell pair because we want to do something else with it, and then it might mm. be good to, yeah, to keep some of those structures. Yeah. Um, yeah, so what I showed you before with measurements, we can also um, conclude from stabilizers. And um, yeah, I would say this is the most important lemma from the paper, and it's a bit lengthy and heavy in notation. I try to break it down um, and explain it together with a picture. Um, but yeah, the goal is to prove that if we measure, so, so we have a line graph here, and we measure the inner nodes, and the goal is to show that the outer nodes um, are a bell pair. And yeah, how we do it. Um, so we have a graph, and we choose a set of measurements, uh, a set of qubits i, in our case, the inner nodes, which we want to measure. And we also choose a measurement pattern. In this case, we choose the measurement pattern to measure x on all qubits. And now the question is, what are the correlations between the outer terms? And to find them, what we do next is um, to have a look at the stabilizers. And every stabilizer can be written as a Pauli string on some set J. It's Pauli C and it has a plus, yeah, positive or negative sign. Um, to recall, um, for example, the stabilizer G2 of this graph is written like this. You have an X on qubit 2 and a set on the neighboring nodes. And in this case, we say the set J is 1, 2, 3, because this has support on the first three nodes. Yeah. And then the string would be just the first three um, operators. And another example is G4. It has a X on the fourth a qubit and set on the two neighboring three and five. And another stabilizer is the product of this two. So the product of this one and this one is, yeah, here we get a set, we get a X, the two sets cancel out, so we get our identity, and here we get a X and a set again. And this is a stabilizer we wrote here. Um, yeah, and to see yeah, to find the correlations, what we do then is we take the stabilizers and we take our measurement pattern and we compare it on the interaction of a set i and j. So in this case, we have a set i, 2, 3, 4, and the set j, 2 and 4, so intersection are qubits 2 and 4. And we compare um, the measurement basis with the operator, and in this case, it's the same on both qubits. And if this is the case, so if all measurement bases and operators are the same on this uh, set, then um, the post measurement state is stabilized by the remaining part of the stabilizer. So if we measure this qubits and x bases, this too is stabilized by z1 and z5. And it also works for other stabilizers. So this is the stabilizer G1 times G3 times G5. And um, on the set, it's the same. So here it's the same. So we know that this state is also stabilized by X1 and X5. And also the product of um, this stabilizer and this stabilizer fulfills this condition. So this X is the same as this X. So the state is also stabilized by the correlation YY. And um, from finding this stabilizers where this, uh, the measurement basis and the operators coincide, we find the correlators of the post-measurement state. And because we know that ZZ, XX, YY is a stabilizer of a Bell state, we know that um, these two states are correlated.
Was it understandable? Or are there questions? Well, if not, um, I continue. Um, yeah, so this gives us um, a more or less easy method to compute the correlators of the stabilizers of a post measurement state. And uh, we choose, or we were looking, or we decided to look for um, graph states where we measure all inner nodes in the X basis. Um, and saw that we can use all graph states. So for this choice of measurement patterns, we can use all graph states where the inner nodes have an even number of neighbors. So the line graph works. Then we have this twisted graph. Um, and we also have this, this graph we found in literature. It's called the crazy graph where we have pairs of nodes and they are always, um, all nodes are connected to uh, two neighbors in the next layer. But in principle, we can do whatever we like. So, or not whatever we like, but there are many options um, which fulfill these conditions. Um, so for example, this graph works. So this is the twisted graph again. This is like an extension of a twisted graph where we have instead of always two nodes, uh, every second time we have two nodes here, every second time we have three nodes. Um, it doesn't have to be um, that, yeah, yeah this, this looks more or less like a line, but it doesn't have to be. We can also have two nodes here and then three nodes somewhere else, and we can combine all the structures and all our possible structures as we like. Uh I, I just wanted to ask, like, I mean, because like, you draw things which sort of like look symmetric. But of course, this is just for the example, right? I mean, it could have been like not really symmetric. As long as you have even number of neighbors, it works. Is it easy to see why even is needed? Yes. Um, so in our choice, our choice is to measure in X basis. So we need states which have stabilizers, which look like this. So the stabilizers should have, on the nodes which we me measure, should always have either an X or an identity. And this is the case if, um, yeah, but the generators have X sets and identity. So we want to somehow cancel out the sets. And this works if um, one node has two neighbors like, like this node three has two neighbors and we multiply the generator two and generator four because both have three as a neighbor. So we get set three an uh, even number of times and then we get an identity. Ah, I see, I see. Okay. Yeah. Oh, sorry, a uh, quick question. Mm -hmm. uh, in, in the next slide, I, I don't quite... I understand your argument that uh, you say because it's the uh, st stabilizer, so it's the fail state. Uh, 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 probably I, I misunderstood in the next slide. In this one? Yeah, this one. Mm -hmm. you, you try to argue that this measurement, post measurement state, is the stabilizer, so it, it's the fail, fail state you want. Is that your argument? Hello? Yeah. So, so why, why is that? Why does, why this one is a stabilizer of a bell state? Yes. Uh, uh, you, you, tr you try to find a stabilizer or you want to generate a bell state and using stabilizer to generate it? Um, so I try to find a state which is entangled. So um, depending, so this method also works for other states, but sometimes the outcome is that, um, for example, I only find this first. So, so yeah, um, so a bell state has, a two qubit bell state has four um, stabilizers or two generators. In this case, we said that xx. And um, 
Yeah, maybe yeah, if you write down the bell state, the zero zero. That's definitely better help. Yeah, so, 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 so. yeah, okay. So if you write the zero zero plus one one bell state down, you can see that it is stabilized by ZZ and XX and therefore also by YY. So it's something what we can so it's something what we can check. And we are looking for states um, where if we do all these measurements, uh, so we measure out the inner nodes, um, we can find some stabilizers which show us that the states aren't angled. For example, yeah, we can also do it for this one. So here we can also find the corresponding stabilizers, but then if we write the list of stabilizers which correspond to this measurement pattern, we see that um, there are no correlations between this. Okay, I see, thank you. Um, Yeah, so this is how we find the measurement patterns or from the measurement patterns, the states. Um, and now I want to come to imperfect graph states. So, so far I assumed that we can prepare uh, the initial states in the class basis, which is equivalent to there are no set flip errors. I assumed that we can perform perfect CZ gates and I assumed that we can perform perfect measurements. And um, if you look at experience, experiments, we see that this is usually not the case, but there are different kinds of, yeah, there are many platforms where we can um, perform uh, or generate graph states and perform such experiments. Um, and there are some errors which typically appear. And in our work, what we address is the first two or we relax the first two assumptions, but we keep the assumption that our measurements are perfect. And uh, we relax uh, the assumption of having a perfect DZ gate by um, assuming that we have a C phase gate instead of a CZ gate. The difference between a CZ and a C phase gate, if we write it down as a matrix, is um, that this minus one becomes the e power minus i phi. And if phi equals to pi, we have a perfect case. And if we have a pi plus epsilon, then we have a slightly detuned case. Um, yeah, and you can consider this by um, applying set flip errors. Um, yeah. So we in the paper we discuss three kind of noises. Here I mainly want to discuss uh, the, uh, the one of the three types, which is uncorrelated phase noise, and just briefly tell you what the other two are. Um, so this is a um, imaginary, yeah, it's a imaginary sphere. And um, yeah, I told you we have a, if we assume that we have a C phase gate, we have this e power i minus i phi. And in the ideal case, the phi is pi equals to pi. So it's here on the unix circle. Um, but it might be slightly detuned. And in the case of uncorrelated phase noise, we assume that it is detuned in both directions and it's equally likely detuned in both directions. And um, if we average over all the probabilities, uh, yeah, if we average over being slightly detuned either in one or in the other directions, um, we get a, another operator, an effective operator, which is, which looks like this. It's, it says with a probability p, we apply a CZ gate as we want, and with the probability one minus p, um, we apply an identity. And the effect on the graph is, um, yeah, if we have a perfect state, we apply all the gates and. Uh, get a perfect graph state, but in the case of um, noise, so it's noise that p is strictly smaller than one. Um, 
we get an ensemble of many graphs. And we can see it, it, the effect as an ensemble of many graphs. With some probability, we get the graph we want. But with some probability, we get a graph um, where one edge is missing. Or with another probability, we get a graph where two edges are missing. So um, our graph is um, an ensemble of the ideal graph and all possible subgraphs. And I got told that this is an error which is likely to appear in superconducting qubits and ion traps. And um, in the paper, we also consider two other noise models. One is that we assume correlated phase noise. It's um, the idea is very similar, but now we assume that um, our CZ gate is um, detuned in a certain direction and it's um, always detuned. Yeah, so, so there's an um, offset, or it's a systematic error such that we have a constant offset. And um, if we assume this, um, this is equivalent of um, dealing with weighted graph states instead of graph states. Weighted graph states are defined in the same way as graph states, but with C phase instead of CZ gates. And um, they are not as nice as graph states because there are no stabilizer states. We can't find stabilizers for this kind of graph state. So it's a bit more complicated to work with them. And um, the third model, um, the third no noise model which we apply, uh, or which we consider are local set flip noises. And I got told that this is a thing which typically appear in optical realizations. And we model it by um, applying um, a gate like this. So with some probability, we keep the normal the, the state which we want to have. And with some probability, we apply set on the state. And this is equivalent uh, with exchanging the plus state with the minus state in the definition of a graph state. Yeah. So what happens if we consider um, noise in our model? So in principle, we still do the same. Um, we find a graph and decide on the measurement pattern and measure it. But uh, now our graph is not the perfect graph anymore. So if you have a perfect graph, like this one, for example, and we measure x1 and x3, this is a stabilizer of the graph state. And because it is a stabilizer of the graph state, we know that the expectation value is 1. Therefore, we know that the measurement outcomes of x1 and x3 can only be either plus, plus 1, plus 1, or minus 1, minus 1. And other options are not possible. Um, but if you have a state with, where one edge is uh, missing, like here, this is not a stabilizer of these graphs anymore. And therefore, the expectation value is zero. And we can measure all possibilities of outcomes. So, um, yeah, what we suggest to do is to measure the state in the measurement scheme as we um, proposed before. And then... Um, Find this, uh, find the stabilizers where we know how the outcomes are uh, correlated. And depending on the outcomes, we can post select for the right outcomes, like the allowed outcomes um, of the state. And after this post selection, so we, we have a state, we measure, and then we post select on certain outcomes, and then we can compute the fidelity. And we are interested to compare different kind of graphs. We are interested in um, the behavior in the low noise limit. And therefore, we define the fidelity susceptibility, which is the derivative of uh, the amount of noise. So it tells us how much worse the state gets if we increase the amount of noise. And um, yeah, we decided to... Um, consider three different states. As a baseline, we um, have the line graph. Um, and then we have we decided to consider the twisted graph. And this is a nice graph to consider because um, it 
it's a subgraph of the grid graph um, of a cluster state. And we also considered the crazy graph because it turned out that this performs very well. And um, here we have a plot um, how well they perform. On the x-axis, you can see how long the graphs are. So they are all chain-like. And we counted the, here we counted the number of inner nodes. And here, so this is one, two, three, four. Yeah, we, we counted the like segments, inner segments. And um, yeah, or layers. So on the x-axis, you can find the layers. And on the y-axis, you can find the um, fidelity susceptibility. And it is good if it is low. Um, and this is the plot for uncorrelated face noise. We see that um, for the path graph, the longer the graph is, the higher is the fidelity susceptibility. And therefore, the worse, the more unlikely it is to get the bell pair at the end, or the more noisy is the state which we get at the end. For the twisted graph, it's a bit better, but the number also increases. And interestingly, for the crazy graph, in the low noise limit, um, it's a constant line. So this one is very resistant against noise. And yeah, we see a similar behavior for local flip noise. And I think this is a very nice result, because what we see here is that what we did is we, we doubled the amount of nodes so we increased it by a factor of only two, but in the no, low noise limit, um, it improves a lot. Uh, it improves the resistance against noise by a lot. And yeah, finally, I would like to show you how to extend the same thing for um, for GH set states. Actually, it's kind of straightforward. We uh, follow the same schemes, but uh, now we want to instead of getting a correlation of two outer nodes, we want to get a correlation of three outer nodes, or four or five. And um, to um, get them, what we do is we choose a middle node, and then we stitch together lines, like here, as many as we want to have qubits in the set state. And um, yeah, the measurement rules work the same. We again measure all inner nodes in the set basis and then we get a we get the correlations of the GH set end state. And it works not only for the line graph or the extended line graph, but we can do the same with um, the crazy graph or with the twisted graph. So here we have this two nodes as a pair of inner nodes and then all the yeah this two nodes are connected to the two and this are connected to them and this are also connected to them. So we kind of stitch lines of graphs to this middle node. And again, for uncorrelated phase noise, we wanted to see how this, this two and this, this pair, the bell pair and the TH Z pair performs. And um, here on the X axis, we have uh, the amount of noise we added. And on the Y axis, we had the fidelity and the a uh, green curve correspond to the line graph or the extended line graph or path graph and the orange um, line to a crazy graph. And we see that up to a certain level, uh, the crazy graph works much better than the line graph. Yeah, in both cases for the bell state and the GH set state. Yeah, this brings me to the end of my talk. So I showed you that we can um, extract bell states and also GH set states from graph states which um, fulfill or which have certain symmetries and um, that noise mitigation is possible for um, yeah, with using post-selection measurements and um, one nice result was that by increasing the number of nodes by a factor of two we significantly improve the noise resistant and yeah, there are several open questions. So one thing which I'm interested in is, is um, yeah, there are more people interested in this problem, which of which graph can we extract from bigger graphs? For example, there's one paper by de Jong et al, which asks if we have a line graph, which is the biggest TH set graph which we can extract from this. And one question is, yeah, can we 
extend this to more general graphs. So given a certain graph, what is the biggest TSZ graph we can extract from it? Yeah, it's a in the moment unsolved question, but maybe this method can contribute to answer it. And another question is whether we can apply similar techniques for non poly operations. Yeah, and with this, I would like to thank um, my group, especially my supervisor, Otfried Güne, and my two collaborators, Otfried and Konrad Szymanski. And I would like to thank you for your attention. Uh, thank you very much uh, for the wonderful talk.